Now, one of the things which you are bound to hear in many videos is that nothing sounds like a mini Moog. I am here to tell you that that is just absolutely not true. Moog has announced the re-release of the Mini Moog Model D. In this video, I will explain why you might want one, and let's face it, who would not want a Mini Moog? But more importantly, I will explain why you really do not need one. Now, just before we get going, I have to make it absolutely clear that I am not knocking the Mini Moog at all. If you watch some other videos about it, particularly those produced by retailers and I'm sure by some reviewers, you will hear the words legendary and iconic. And indeed, it is a legendary synthesizer. It was in production for over 10 years from 1970 to 1981, and it has been used on probably thousands and thousands of records throughout the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, and into the 21st century. It has been produced by Moog hand assembled in their factory. It looks terrific. It has a wooden cabinet made from locally sourced wood, and it is indeed an instrument of desire. If you have always wanted a mini mode but didn't want to pay the rather ridiculous price of second-hand models, this is your opportunity to buy a new one. At which point we do have to talk about price. The headline figure, what in the UK I think we would call the manufacturer's suggested or recommended selling price, is $5,299. At the time of making this video, which is towards the end of November 2022, both Sweetwater and Perfect Circuit have it on sale at $5,000. Or to be technically correct, $4,999. Now, in the UK, as musicians who live in the UK will know, we often get stung by the pound equals dollar syndrome. However, I am rather surprised to find that at the moment three major UK retailers, or at least companies who sell into the UK, are asking £5,290 for it. So that is a direct pound equals dollar conversion. Now, over the last 12 months, the pound's value against the dollar has been steadily falling off a cliff. However, when I asked Alexa how much a $5,000 synth should cost in the UK, it replied around £4,150. Now, I'm sure there are reasonable explanations for this, but however you look at it in the UK, I think we are getting a pretty poor deal. Now, one final thing about the price. When Moog first re-released the Mini Moog in 2016, I believe it cost around $3,500. Now, a few months ago, Moog actually came out and said they were increasing the price of certain synthesizers by up to 40%. Other manufacturers said nothing, just quietly increased their prices. So, well done, Moog, for being upfront about it. So if you look at the new price of five grand, that is actually just over a 40% increase on the 2016 price. So if we can climb down from the hype just a little bit and try to get some perspective on the situation, we are looking at a 50 year old synth design. Now that is in no way to say that it is a bad design. Of course it isn't, it is a superb synthesizer. But this new release, 50 years later, makes no use of modern technology. Of course, it has MIDI, it's got CV outputs, it has had a few updates over the 2016 version, but it is essentially the same synthesizer Moog made 50 years ago. And it's monophonic. Now, one of the things which you are bound to hear in many videos is that nothing sounds like a mini Moog. Now, I am here to tell you that that is just absolutely not true. And to support me in my argument, I'm going to enlist the help of two fellow YouTubers. They don't know it, but I am going to use some of their videos to prove the point and to prove to you that the Mini Moog sound is not exclusive to the Mini Moog. I'll start with Mark Doty of Automatic Games there. He thought the Mini Moog sound was so unique and distinctive that anybody would be able to tell it apart from other synthesizers. 
Somebody did a video of Tess playing the Mini Moog and other hardware synths and he asked his viewers if they could spot the Mini Moog and he was so sure that people would be able to tell the difference. However, after people commented on the video, he made a second follow-up video and he had to admit he was wrong. People could not tell which was the real Mini Moog. Now, Automatic Gainsay is a channel about synthesizers, and many of the people who commented were Mini Moog owners. So, if synthesists and Mini Moog owners can't tell which is the real Mini Moog, I don't think the rest of us have much of a chance. So, the takeaway here is that many hardware synthesizers can produce sounds just like a Mini Moog. I shall link to these videos in the description. There are a lot of resources in the description if you want to check them out. It's a very interesting test, so I would certainly recommend you check out the video and take the Mini Moog test yourself. Now, if one of the reasons for wanting a Mini Moog is because of the front panel layout, you have one knob per function, which I just absolutely love, then there are still alternatives. There is Behringer's Model D. Now, this is not a full-size instrument. It's a desktop module, although it also fits into a 19-inch rack. However, it has the same front panel layout as the Mini Moog. And it sounds like a Mini Moog, and it is around 1 20th of the price. If you want something that looks a little bit more like the full Mini Moog, then there's Behringer's Poly D, which is somewhere a little over twice the price of the Model D. This has four oscillators and a sequencer. Unfortunately, it is not a polyphonic instrument as its name would suggest. It is a paraphonic instrument. And if you would like to know how paraphony works on the Poly D, I made a video about that. You can check that out up there and a link, of course, in the description. Now, over the last few years, the Poly D has actually been one of the industry's most popular synthesizers. And Starsky Cars made a video comparing the Mini Moog with the Poly D, so you might want to check that out as well. If you would like something with a few more bells and whistles, shall we say, then take a look at Studio Electronics MIDI Mini. They took the concept of the Mini Moog and ran with it. It is a Mini Moog on steroids, if you like. It's another module worth checking out, and it's around two thirds the price of the new Mini Moog. Now, if you would prefer a genuine Moog synthesizer, then there are alternatives to the Mini Moog. There is Moog's Matriarch, which has four oscillators and is less than half the price of the Mini Moog. Now, one of the things which we didn't really talk about was versatility. The Mini Moog's architecture is hardwired into the synth. The Matriarch is a semi-modular synth, so as well as having a hardwired signal path, you can also patch different modules together in different ways. So this vastly increases its versatility, as well as allowing you to patch the Matriarch to other semi-modular synths and modular equipment. If you want something a little smaller, there is also Moog's own grandmother, which is around a fifth of the price of the Mini Moog. This only has two oscillators, but again, it's a modular synth, so its versatility is much greater than that of the Mini Moog, I would venture to suggest. And surprise, surprise, Starsky Carl has also done a video comparing the Mini Moog with the Grandmother. And his conclusion is that, yes, you can get Moog-type sounds out of the Grandmother. It is, after all, a Moog instrument. And sitting somewhere in between these two, price-wise, is the Sub-37. This is not semi-modular, but it has a mass of hands-on controls, and it can save presets. So hardware-wise, there are a lot of alternative options, both from Moog itself and from other manufacturers. If we're talking about Minimoog alternatives, we have to talk about Minimoog software emulations. Now, you don't get the wonderful hands-on feel with software, but you can do a lot more with software than you can with hardware. Now, I'm not going to go into a massive detail here because Starsky Car has already done it for us. He has created a Minimoog Soft Synth Shootout. The main thing to say about this video is that it is a few years old and many of the instruments have been updated since then. One of the great things you can do with software, which you can't really do with hardware, is to add extras to it. 
Now, if I want any mini mug goodness, I tend to use Arturia's Mini V. That comes with Arturia's V collection, but you can also buy it separately. I'll see if I can find a link to that and put it in the description. In true Arturia style, it has added many additions to the mini mug layout. Not least of all is to include some effects and you can play it polyphonically. Now, I also made a video about this, which you can check out there if you wish. So although the new Mini Mug Model D release is probably a synthesizer I think most synthesis would love to own, I don't think buying it for the sound is the best reason. There are many alternatives in hardware and in software. I would venture to suggest that the main reason for buying this new release is not for the sound but for all the other reasons we've mentioned because it's mo because it's hand built because it looks beautiful and it's a part of synthesizer history so whether you want to spend five grand on that or not that is your decision if you did i'm sure it would be a beautiful instrument which would give you many years of enjoyment but for the rest of us who don't want or simply can't afford to spend five grand on a 50 year old monosynth um, there are many alternatives let me know your thoughts in the comments are you really tempted by this new release or are you happy with a hardware or software alternative if you have enjoyed this video then here are some other videos i think you might enjoy as well as always thank you for watching and i will see you again soon